Good morning, everybody. It's Robin. Just want to give you a, another post aneurysm update. It's now been about uh, just a little over a month since I've been back home, because five weeks. So last time I did the update was a couple of weeks ago. And let's see what's changed since then. Well, my energy has been getting better. I've been finally sleeping a little bit better. Still waking up pretty early though, usually around 5. I'm getting in around 10, 11 the latest. I'm not having to nap anymore during the day, which is great. Uh, I've got energy to play guitar, finally. And physically, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm eating well. And I don't have any more pain when I'm standing. I've been getting out for exercise, usually cycling now and walking consistently. So the only residual effect still is the uh, numbness in the scalp, which would be all about here, here, and here I can start to feel it again. I think this is starting to improve. I'm starting to feel more sensation up around here, whereas a few weeks ago I don't think I felt anything. So that's a good sign. I've got uh, to talk to my doctor today at 3 o'clock. He's going to call me to see how I'm doing. So that's probably the only thing I'm going to mention is the, the, the numbness and then also a little bit of jaw pain when, um, you know, having to open wide while eating, which is coming from, you know, the incision here. So anyway, the... Um, Scar is still, you know, pretty faint. I think up on the top there, it's disappeared. So yeah, the uh, hair is slowly growing back. So I am continuing to play as far as um, guitar goes, making videos from home. Busking is still banned. So anybody who is always saying, um, good to see you out there again, that's not recent. All these videos I'm posting, of busking are from end of 2019. Some are even going back farther, 2017, 2016. I've got about three years of a backlog of videos that I'm putting up. And I'm going through them now and just finding choice jams to put up. I used to do an entire show at once and put it up, which, you know, nobody really watched. But I'm looking at the song lists of these sets I used to do, and it's just hilarious. I used to play almost, um, you know, over 50 songs in a show. Um, so that was crazy. Like, my stamina was uh, amazing. But, you know, now I'm considering the effects of all that busking. People are always like, oh, yeah, it would be nice to see you out there again. Well, I don't know if that's actually going to happen. First of all, I have to wait and see if it's allowed again. And do I really want to put myself under that kind of stress again, you know, for so little reward? Um, as you know from my videos, it was a lot of stress with, you know, a one in a hundred appreciation that I got from the audience like that last video with the woman breaking down and crying and that is extremely rare i mean that happened twice i think or somebody actually cried in front of me in five years i mean i get other appreciation too when people stop and talk but that's also rare so it was more stress than pleasure and i just pushed through it because i wanted to see if i could push through it and, you know, by the force of the music, the force of improvisation to see if I would get a reaction. And most often I didn't. So, to be honest, I am not super eager to get out there again. Maybe I will, you know, just to get some, I don't know, new songs and new videos. The thing that's a bit frustrating with YouTube is the fact that all my busking videos get way more views than anything I do at home even though what I might do at home could be better because I'm actually 
able to concentrate fully on what I'm doing and the sound recording will be better too. I think people are curious to see what is going on on the street as it's, you know, a time machine look back at how people used to be uh, back in the pre-mask days. So I understand that fascination and, you know, to comment on how uh, people are not reacting to what I'm doing. I mean, that's the number one comment on the channel is, I can't believe it. People are ignoring you. Oh, and I would pull up a lawn chair. I mean, I hear this a hundred times. So there is a fascination with that. And, you know, just seeing me being ignored. I don't know. But just seeing some life on the street. So I kind of get that. So what I'm going to be doing is a mix of uh, busking video, home original video, and trying to stress the original songs that I'm doing so I can sell those on Bandcamp. As you know, that is one of my few ways to make income now. And it's picking up pretty good in the last you know, five months or so. Since I became more known on YouTube, I've been selling on Bandcamp fairly consistently. And the great thing is you can pay the listed price or you can even pay more. So that is really nice. So I'm thanking everybody who's been contributing and supporting on Bandcamp. Uh, that makes me feel really good to know that you are appreciating the music that I am making. So the other uh, links in my description are for Patreon. And that is like the monthly subscription. So you can put in, say, five bucks or ten bucks a month, and then you can quit at any time. Uh, I've got a new feature on there for taking uh, requests. I decided I'm going to do it this way. Everybody's always asking me for requests, but I decided to do it like this because it's a lot of work to do requests. I have to learn the song. I have to do the video and uh, audio work. It's usually a day's work. So now for a hundred bucks, you can put in a request and you know I don't care what it is I will do it and I will do it to the best of my ability so I've got a few of these requests coming up next month that uh, from people that are pledged to that level so they basically paid a hundred bucks uh, you know one time and then they can quit and then you know if you want to get another song you can pay again but I will if you want dedicate this song to anybody you want so you could send it to someone as a gift and get that personal touch to it and then i will mention your name when i put it up on youtube as in you know this is a patreon request you know from steve austin whatever so that is the uh, one way that i can think of to actually make a little cash now that i am not able to get out so um, the other one of course was uh, paypal tip and also Redbubble t-shirt sales, which is also picking up. I think I make about, a, I don't know, a hundred bucks a month on that now. So I make only about $4 per t-shirt sale. So it's a little bit, but uh, there's a nice variety of designs on there. And somebody has helped me with those designs. And I'm very grateful to him. Um, I believe his name is Douglas. So he's been uh, really great to uh, lend his talents to that. So uh, you can get like the Frankenstein shirt or just me in a silhouette, which I'm wearing right now, as you can see. So I'm going to be doing a jam shortly, another original. So I want to remind you, too, that the Bandcamp Friday will be coming up on, um, what day was it? Uh, let me look here. It's not this Friday. It's a Friday, first Friday in, in June. So that would be the fourth, midnight to midnight Pacific time. So you know, any time is good to buy uh, Bandcamp songs. But on that day, I would get 100% of the sale less the their conversion fees, which is probably, I don't know, 40, 50 cents. But normal day, I would get 90%. So I just get a little bit more on Bandcamp Friday. So... I'm always trying to post new things, and I've got stuff coming up. I'm hearing more requests from people that want to hear extended tracks, like that last song I did, uh, Living Day to Day. Somebody actually complained that it wasn't long enough. <laughs> it's funny because it was 30 minutes. 
So I do have some people on Bandcamp that will not buy anything less than an hour as far as the jam goes. Um, you know, and I'm okay with doing those occasionally. And uh, well, my last album, though, is more of a variety. Uh, I think it was like 11 tracks, you know, going for shorter songs. I think the longest two tracks were 30 minutes each. But uh, check out that album if you haven't heard it. I'm really, uh, you know, digging deep uh, even more now on my tracks. Um, this whole aneurysm thing has freaked me out a little bit in retrospect. I mean, not while I was in the hospital, I didn't really think about it. But after getting home and reading about it and survival rates and complications and things, I was a little bit freaked out. You know, that um, nothing serious happened as far as after effects go. So every jam I do now is gonna have that little bit extra sauce. Um, you know, and as usual, it's direct from um, my uh, improv brain um, to, to my fingers. And I'm just gonna be probably you know, putting even more concentration into it now. So I'm really valuing you know, each jam that I do just you know, going day to day and uh, trying to make the most out of it. So anybody who's asking how I can do it this long, I can say that it is um, kind of look at the fretboard as a huge map um, of the world even, or the universe. And I can see that there are millions of combinations that are possible. And so I'm always trying to play things in a different way and you know I may be using the some the same notes obviously but putting them in different um, combinations so you know different speeds uh, combination volume you know using my fingers is adding a lot of texture and feeling as well so that's just the way my brain works it hates repetition and that's why I enjoy jamming so much because it lets me explore and experiment with sounds. And it's like you might find something, it's like, hey, that sounded good, you know, and then you then I will work on that, continuing that line with something else. So the trick is to try to build a story of peaks and valleys where each note leads to something else. You know, it's like Kwai Chan Kane walking through the forest one step at a time. It's very zen. So, and it's just building on what's gone before. So if I play something slow, eventually that will lead into something faster. And you've got to keep a interest by, you know, you can't just play the same thing all the time. That's a problem I hear with a lot of guitarists. They tend to just play the same thing over and over. Um, there's no variance in what they're doing. And, you know, and there's various things you can do to change the the sounds, you know, the amount of pressure you put on the strings, how much you're using the left hand, how much you're using the right hand. So all these things work together. And of course, the longer you do it, the better you get at it. So that's what I'm trying to do in my jams. And, you know, I've gotten good at it over the years. So at home, I have uh, complete free reign to play even longer without any kind of interruptions from like uh, beggars asking me for money. So so uh, that's the update for now, um, and then I'll just continue uh, up with a new original jam I'm going to put up later. So I hope you've been enjoying uh, the videos, and I'll talk to you soon.